Welcome and hello. Today's subject is going to be narcissists. You know, eight common mind games people play on you. Okay, so anyways, this show is uh, a show that we deal with narcissist abuse, narcissists, both of my parents were narcissists. And so, you know, I had to create boundaries after a while. And so far I've been pretty good at putting up those boundaries. And you see, I'm a happy person. I'm an individual. I do things my way. I don't follow the crowd. So that draws in more narcissists. So I think I know what I'm talking about when it comes to narcissists. They're actively trying to destroy my life as we speak because that's just who they are. You know, they have nothing better to do than to try to make somebody else's life miserable. You see, I don't talk to any of these people, you know, because I, you can see them. You know, after you've been through enough narcissists, you kind of tell who these people are, you know. So anyways, to the video, to the point, it's mind games are common in our daily interactions. Whether we realize it or not, these manipulative tactics can be subtle or overt, but they all aim to gain control over the other person's thoughts, emotions, and actions. Understanding and recognizing these mind games is crucial for maintaining healthy relationships and protecting one's mental well-being. You see, um, I, I've been in a point in my life where, you know, I'm pretty much independent from a lot of people. Um, you know, I've worked with narcissistic people before. Several years ago, I worked with this one guy who was a covert narcissist. And, you know, I was happy-go-lucky. And, you know, at first he liked me, but then, then he didn't, you know. Um, he was an alcoholic. Uh, he... He was overweight, so his wife was overweight, his two girls were overweight, so, um, you know, he just wasn't happy with his life, you know. Um, a lot of people working at that job was overweight as well, and, you know, I was older than most of those people, so, you know, hey, how do you stay so skinny, this and that, and how do you do this or that, hey, I don't eat pizza, I don't drink pop, and so on and so forth. I eat this and I eat that, and I'm not eating what you're eating. And, you know, they're like, oh, that's cool, but, you know, I'm gonna continue eating my pizza and my subs and so on, everything that is not healthy for you. So anyways, um, you know, it got to the point where this person um, was listening to my interactions with people and he would try to, inter uh, to cause problems in my day to day but I, I I knew who he was because when you know them you know them but anyways it got to the point where one day you know I came in it was nice and sunny it was summer and he's like hey how are you doing and I'm like man I am awesome another awesome day he's like another awesome day it's like he gave himself away there you know like yeah you totally are a hater so anyways I left there. The point is, these people want to think, want to make your life live in hell just because you're happy, right? I'm happy. I'm content. I do my own thing. I don't talk to many people because I go to the gym to work out, right? That's what we're supposed to do, right? Is go to the gym and work out, work your butt off, leave it all at the gym and head out, okay? But some people just show up just to ego lift. Some people just come in just to people watch and some people really don't aren't doing anything at the gym Then they complain. Uh, well, how come I'm not seeing gains? Well, you're not taking your lifting To the next level, right? Oh, what are you doing? You're probably drinking alcohol on the weekends. You're probably smoking dope You're probably seeing p-hub and you know all your Essence gets put in a towel or down the toilet, right? So then you know, these people complain and hate on people who are doing better than them. And that's what's happening to me. It happens to me all the time. It happens to me uh, all last week and the week before that and so on and so forth. You know, these people go out of their way to, oh, that girl likes you. I'm going to go over there and make sure she doesn't talk to you again. This is how hateful these people are. So I should know what the heck I'm talking about when it comes to these low lives. Okay, so gaslighting is another thing these douchebags do. I have no respect for these people, none whatsoever. If you can't mind your own business, um, you know, 
Go walk off a short pier, my friend. Gaslighting, questioning your reality is what they want you to be doing. You see, gaslighting is a particularly insidious form of manipulation that aims to make you question your perception, memories, and your sanity. A person who engages in gaslighting may deny events that have occurred, accuse you of being too sensitive, or twist the truth to fit their narrative. Over time, this can lead to confusion, self-doubt, and distorted sense of reality. You see, what these people want you to do is they want you to overreact. You see, so they go out and spread lies about you, and then they go and how would you say, <clears throat> bother you, so you react a certain way, and then they're like, oh, you see, he is this person. You see, so this is what they do. So I advise you to get to know who you are, start loving yourself, and this is where it all starts. You see, these people uh, haven't gotten to me because I am strong within myself, I have God, and I don't need these people because these people aren't doing anything in their life. It took me a while to be where I'm at, but hey, if you don't start sooner rather than later, you'll never be able to beat these little girls because this is what they are. You know, I just shake them off. And hey, go ahead, live your life because your life is shitty, my friend. If you find yourself constantly second guessing your thoughts and feelings because that's what they want you to be doing, it may be a sign that you're experiencing gaslighting. Trusting your instincts and seeking support from friends, family, and a therapist who can provide an objective perspective is essential. Watching this vi video will also help. Uh, also, uh, subscribing to this channel will also help you because there's other ways that you can learn on this channel. How to love yourself and find God and so on and so forth. And guilt tripping is the number two thing right guilt tripping emotional manipulation at its finest this is what these people do okay they have all sorts of little ways to i'm not doing anything they act like little girls you see these these guys are doing feminine tactics this is what women do i leave this up to the women i expect it from women but so-called men to do these things you're feminine that's why i don't deal with you that's why i don't acknowledge you that's why i don't treat you like a man because this is what women do guilt tripping guilt tripping is a tactic that involves making someone feel guilty or responsible for manipulators a manipulator's own feelings or actions see what i'm saying that's a woman's job phrases like if you cared about me you would or I would have I wouldn't have done this if you hadn't done XYZ. Are typical examples of guilt tripping language. To counter guilt tripping, it's important to remember that you are not responsible for another person's emotions or choices. See where these people would go out there and smear my name and this and that because I started this YouTube channel. You see, the thing is people like me because I'm authentic and I say how it is. And I've experienced a lot in my life where I can help others and these people know. So they go and talk crap about me and guess what? Some people listen and some people don't, you see? So what they want you to be doing is not concentrating on your goals. They want you to be concentrating on the things they're causing. You see, these people want attention because mommy and daddy didn't pay them attention when they were a child. Goo goo gaga, bitch. So set clear boundaries. That's what I do. I don't talk to these people. I don't acknowledge them. I just leave them over there because that's what they need to be put out in the cold set clear boundaries and communicate your needs and feel assertive without allowing yourselves to be swayed by manipulative tactics. I just leave them alone. They know better than to come fucking bother me. Okay, because they won't do it to your face. They're the biggest coward crybabies in the world. Okay, they've never said anything to my face. They won't. See, the reason they resort to these tactics is they already tried to bully me and this and that. And I stood up for myself and they already know I can't take this guy down. That's why they employ flying monkeys. Number three, silent treatment from 
so-called men withholding communication. This has happened to me. There's this guy named Alex at the gym that I go to. Douchebag. He's one of those flying monkeys. I know their names. Anyways, so this guy would come over and when there wasn't this certain guy named V for vagina, right? Anyways, when he wasn't around, he talks to me. When that vagina is around, he doesn't talk to me. Mm. Mm. Like I said, these are women. Silent treatment is a form of emotional abuse that involves withholding communication or affection as a means of punishment or control. See, I don't want to talk to you today. Oh, wham. This can leave the victim feeling isolated, confused, and desperate for resolution. So when I noticed he was doing this, I said, hmm, who's your master? Who's the douchebag? Hmm, V, why? He talked to me one day, and all of a sudden, oh, he's still over there. That's how you know haters. They talk to you one day, and then they don't talk to you at all. Those are the narcs. Those are the jealous men. Like I said, they behave like women. That's why I don't respect any narcissist. They're like a woman. Their mama treated them like a mom, like a mama's boy. Their dad wasn't around to teach them tough love. So, if you are on the receiving end of the silent treatment, it's essential to recognize that this behavior is not a healthy way to resolve conflict. You see. See, they don't know how to resolve problems. They know how to cause them. Attempt to open up a dialogue. I don't suggest this, but whatever. But if the other person remains unresponsive, which they will be, because what are you talking about? Gaslighting. Consider seeking support from others. It's up to you. You have to get to know you. You have to love yourself. No one else is gonna deal with this. Everybody else doesn't really know themselves. Everybody else is gonna give you shit advice. Number four, love bombing. This is especially uh, for the women, okay? Too much, too soon, yes, men do it, but I'm talking about girls because I'm a man. Love bombing is a tactic often used in the early stages of a relationship. In this tactic, the manipulator chose their partner with showers, their partner with excessive affection. I've experienced this myself, attention and gifts. While this may seem flattering initially, it often is a way to create a sense of dependency and control. See, they want you to Oh yeah, she or he really loves me. And you put down your guards. And then they control you and then they got you, right? If a new relationship feels too intense, too quickly, worry about this. It may be a red flag for the love bombing. Take things slowly and be cautious of anyone who tries to rush a natural pro progression of a relationship. See, when I talk to girls, it's like I tell them, hey, let's just see where this naturally goes. I'm not here to force it in any way. Let's just see what happens naturally. Okay, let's just have fun. They're usually down for fun. What girl is not down for fun? Number five, passive aggressive behavior by snitches get stitches. Hidden hostility by these pansy so-called men. Passive aggressive behavior involves expressing negative feelings indirectly. Like I said, women behavior, often through subtle jabs, sarcasm, or nonverbal cues. You see, in my day, when you wanted, when you wanted to say something to someone, you do it to their face. This can be difficult to confront because the aggression is veiled and can be easily denied. When dealing with passive aggressive behavior, addressing the, the underlying issues directly and assertively is essential. Call out the behavior when you see it and encourage an open and honest communication that won't ever fucking work. Forget that, all right? Learn to leave these people alone. Don't give a crap about them. Don't even look at them because that's how they treat you. Treat them how they treat you. They don't like it, okay? Triangulation, I experienced this also. So you have V, you have Alex, and this other fat fuck. 
you know, you can tell he's an alcoholic because he's big beer belly. They're, they're in the gym all the time that I'm there. And they recruited another uh, fellow flying monkey. You know, I don't know his name, but I don't really care. Six, triangulation, tri triangulation, pitting people against each other. These people will work in threes, okay? I see you know these douchebags and his flying monkeys. Triangulation is a manipulative tactic that involves bringing a third party into the conflict or relationship dynamic. The, manip the manipulator may use the third party to gain leverage, create jealousy, or deflect blame. To break the cycle of triangulation, focus on maintaining direct and honest communication with these people involved. Refuse to engage in gossip or rumors, because this is what people do. See, these, these haters, these uh, uh, jealous people, these envious people, when they gossip about you, they're talking about themselves. And I'll go into the next point about projection, because that's what it is. Reflect, reflecting their issues onto you. Projection, okay? I know about this because they try to get away with it. You see, people underestimate me because I don't speak to no one. That's the greatest thing an enemy can do is underestimate you. Projection, reflecting their issues onto you. Projection is a defense mechanism in which people attribute their unacceptable thoughts, feelings, and behavior to someone else. For example, a person who is insecure about their intelligence may accuse others of being stupid or uneducated. See? Because these people have to be number one. No matter what happens, see, they gotta appear smarter than everybody and they'll play these little games like little girls in high school. When dealing with projection, it's important to remember that the issue lies with the person doing the projection, not with you. You see, when I left the gym because these people are idiots, I went to another gym and they started talking crap about me and guess what I did? I did nothing because these people want to throw me off my game to pay them attention. You see, they don't want me to fulfill my mission of helping people. You see what I'm saying? They don't want this information to get out to people because how many people are talking about this? Who's here trying to help you recognize the enemies who are next to you? It's in your family, it's in your friend group, it's your boss, it's those closest to you. The people that are lazy, that don't want you to be better than them because then they're gonna feel bad about being themselves. They don't wanna work. They don't wanna work on getting better. They wanna continue doing their drugs, doing their womanizing, doing their drinking, and smoking their dope, and watching P-Hub. That's all they wanna do. That's what they want to do. But when they see someone who's happy, independent, go-lucky, and a go, uh, go-getter, then, oh my God, we gotta ruin this person. Think about what these people are. Right? Set clear boundaries and refuse to take on another person's issues as your own. So just, let them talk crap. It doesn't matter. If people are going to listen to these people, they don't need to be in your life anyways. Eight, nagging. This is women. This is women. That's why I am single. Okay, that's why I stay single. As soon as someone starts nagging, boom, you are out. Beat it. Backhanded compliments and put downs. Nagging is a tactic often used in dating and social settings where the manipulator gives a backhanded compliment or subtle put down to undermine the other person's self-esteem. This is usually done in an attempt to make the victim feel more vulnerable and receptive to the manipulation. Manipulation, women do this and feminine men. If you experience, experience nagging, call it out for what it is, manipulative tactics designed to make you feel small. Surround yourself with people who build you up rather than tear you down. You see what I just, this, see the reason why I just said, as soon as you start nagging, you're out? Because there's no reason to, for these people to be in your life. Whenever you see bad behavior, don't talk to them, get rid of them, and if they're at work, just smile and play stupid, okay? 
Casey, this is a very uh, good case here. You'll learn a lot from here, okay? We're halfway done. Rogers encounters with a manipulative mind the man manipulative mind games. Roger, a 35 year old marketing professor, professional I should say, had been dating his girlfriend, Emily, for six months. At first, the relationship seemed perfect with Emily showering Roger's affect affectionately. What did we say about love bombing, right? I've experienced this. However, as time passed, Roger noticed a change in Emily's behavior. Women are good at this. Emily started to use guilt tripping tactics whenever Roger wanted to spend time with his family and friends. Control, okay? It's about controlling you, taking out your support group. You should always, she would say things like, if you loved me, you would stay home with me tonight. Have you heard that, right? Have you experienced that? Has your mom done that? Roger also noticed that Emily would give him silent, the silent treatment whenever he disagreed, leaving him isolated and confused. This is what they want you to do. They don't want you to concentrate on your business. And business, being with your family, going out with your friends, having peace of mind. They don't want you to do that. Women want to play mental games with you. If these people are doing this, get them out. You, I have peace, love, and joy because I don't keep people that are worthless in my life. And you should do the same. One day, Roger confided in his best friend, Mark, about the issues he was facing in his relationship. To Roger's surprise, Emily became furious when she finds out, accusing Roger of betraying her trust, wham, and involving Mark in their private matters. Who cares? Emily began to use triangulation tactics, pitting Roger against Mark and making Roger question his friendship and loyalty. This is what people do. I've experienced it. There was this one time, you know, I have a pool here where I live and there was this 60 some year old woman who wanted to sleep with me. I didn't really care because she's 65. I like 18 to 24 year old adult females, not baked in the sun 65 year olds. Anyways. She was trying to get close and her husband and I, we would have small talk and this and that. Next thing you know, he wouldn't even talk to me. See, this is what women do because I didn't, you know, sleep with her. She turns her husband against me. This is what I'm talking about. Women do this to dumb men all the time. Okay, <laughs> this is what they do. Okay, so. Feeling overwhelmed and emotionally drained, Roger decided to seek the help of a therapist. Good for him. Through therapy, Roger learned to recognize the manipulative mind games. Emily was playing and developing strategies to set clear boundaries and communicate his needs assertively. If you don't have money for a therapist, I suggest you uh, subscribe. Become a member, all right? And so anyways, to. Although it was a difficult decision, Roger ultimately ended his relationship with Emily. See what I'm saying? Realizing that the constant manipulation was not healthy for his mental well-being. With the support of his friends and his family and therapists. You see, this person wanted to take his support system away to further sink his teeth in. Because what would happen is if she would if she would keep going down this she would have had two or three guys that she was sleeping with. Roger began to rebuild his self-esteem and learn to recognize the signs of manipulative behavior in future relationships. So key takeaways, all right? Key takeaways this is very important for you because I want you to learn this. I want you to gain freedom like I have because these people can do nothing to me because they're insignificant. It doesn't matter what they try to do because they do it doesn't matter. They're playing a game that only exists in their mind. Mind games are manipulative tactics used to gain control over another person's thought, emotions, and actions. Gaslighting involves questioning someone's reality that can lead to feelings of confusion and self-doubt. Guilt tripping is a form of emotional manipulation that makes someone feel responsible for the manipulator's feelings and actions. 
Silent treatment is a form of emotional abuse that involves withdraw withholding communication or, or affection as a means of punishment or control. You know, like most married men, oh, not tonight, that's why I'm not married, I will never get married. That is for people that don't know women yet. Love bombing is a tactic used in the early stage of relationship. I experienced this myself where the manipulator shows their partner, showers their partner with ex excessive affection and attention to create a sense of dependency. Passive aggressive behavior, have you experienced it? I'm sure you have, involves expressing negative feelings indirectly through subtle jabs, right? Sarcasm or nonverbal cues. Triangulation is a manipulative tactic that involves bringing a third party into the conflict or relationship dynamics to gain leverage and deflect blame. Projection, right? Is a defensive mechanism in which a person attributes their own unex uh, unacceptable thoughts, feelings, or behaviors onto someone else. Negative nagging is a tactic used in dating and social setting where manipulators give the backhanded compliments or subtle put downs to undermine the other person's self esteem. All right. So you have to set clear boundaries. If you don't love yourself, if you don't treat yourself well, if you don't put yourself first, you're going to suck at setting boundaries. Okay. Setting clear boundaries, communicate assertively and maintaining a strong sense of self can help you navigate challenging relationships. The conclusion, if you made it this far, thank you very much. I hope you've learned something, all right? Because I'm here to help people because I've learned a lot because I've made a lot of mistakes, okay? Recognizing the understanding these familiar mind games is the first step in projecting, protecting yourself from manipulation. You can navigate even the most challenging relationship with confidence and grace by setting clear boundaries. Like I just mentioned, you have to get good at setting boundaries. You have to start loving yourself. You have to subscribe to this channel, okay? Because you will get strong. You'll do this little by little, and I'll be here if you need help, all right? I've been through this. Communicate assertively and maintain a strong sense of self. See, you have to get to know yourself. You have to love yourself. You have to treat yourself well. You have to stop drinking. It's a poison. You have to stop doing drugs. You have to stop doing all these things. You have to start putting, start putting importance on you, not in another person, being man or female, okay? So remember, if you're finding yourself in a relationship where mind games and manipulation are constantly present, it may be time to reevaluate the relationship altogether. Seek support from trusted friends, family members, or a therapist who can help you develop a plan, move forward in a healthy, positive direction. And this is the end of the video, and I will see you in another video.